Hello again. I've got a lesson here where we're going to talk about radical or exponential form. And basically what I did was I put up the same problem twice. The cube root of 320, or 320 uh, as a quantity, to the one-third. And the question that students usually ask is, well, which way is better? And what I tell my students is, whichever way is easier to, for you to solve. I mean, ultimately, when you're solving it, you're probably going to put it in radical form. But some students prefer doing this, and some students prefer doing this. And there is no really uh, right answer, whichever way helps you simplify. Personally, I like this way, uh, not for this particular type of problem, but at least for understanding what's going on. But when it comes to just solving really quickly, I actually prefer this way, on this particular type of problem. But you should know that they're interchangeable. 320 to the 1 third is the same thing as the cube root of 320. And basically that's because it's the cube root of 320 to the first power. The power inside is the numerator, and whatever the uh, radicand number is, or the number outside the root, pardon me, is uh, the denominator. So I'm going to show you how to solve it using both ways, or both ways that I would teach it. And then you just leave it up to the students to solve. I mean, ultimately, they're going to choose what they're going to like best. So in this case, what I do is I say, okay, we've got to figure out if uh, there's three of a kind that we can you know, kind of pull out of this uh, radical, and then anything that isn't three of a kind, we just leave it. So I'm going to split the number 320. Now, I do know that 32 times 10 is 320. There are other um, combinations that you can make to, I guess maybe permutation would be a more correct word for that, but you can use different numbers. You don't have to use 32 and 10, you can use 16 and 20, for instance, but I already picked 32 and 10. You can't, well, excuse me, you can split 10, you can split 10 into 5 and 2. What I meant to say was you can't split those numbers because they're prime, so you circle them. When you split 32, you split it into um, 8 and 4. Circle the primes. Don't circle the composite numbers. The composite numbers are the numbers you can split. Only circle the primes. Now, it's basically saying that we take out 3 of a kind. That's all there really is to it. So if we take out 3 of a kind, we're going to take out, okay, I've got three twos, bam. Is there anything else that we can take out as three of a kind? And the answer is yeah. Three more twos. And then I've got a five left over. And then students put this answer down. Oh, it's a four radical five. Well, no, we didn't use a square root five. We used a cube root five. So make sure you're specific on that too. It should be four uh, times the cube root of five. And that's the answer. Now, that's actually very simple for students to do, but to understand, not necessarily. I like this way in terms of understanding, but in terms of teaching this particular type of problem, I don't think it's good. I think when you're working with denominators, though, this approach is good, which is why I can't say, oh, just always do this way, because I don't really feel that way. I feel that you have to have a good mastery of both techniques. So, if we go ahead and look at this one, 320 to the one-third power, what we're going to do is do it the same way, except... Uh, something slightly different here. We're going to split 320 into 32 times 10 to the one third. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, oh, okay, uh, see if I can split 32. And the answer was yes, I could. It's 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2. So it was 2 to the fifth times, and 10 was 5 times 2 which is 2 times 5. And it's all to the one-third power. As I said, I would never actually suggest this way of doing this particular type of problem. But in understand, in, uh, when it comes to knowing what you're supposed to do, especially when you're working with denominators, I would say that this is a good approach. Okay. So here we go. We're not actually done. Uh, let me just rephrase what I did, just in case anybody is a little um, shook up. 32 is the same thing as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 to the fifth. 10 is the same thing as 5 times 2, uh, 2 or 2 times 5. Let's rephrase this a little bit better though. This is 2 to the 1st and this is 5 to the 1st. 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 1st is 2 to the 6th. And you can't multiply it with 5 to the 1st. They're different bases so they don't multiply. The, no law of exponents works there. The power, product property doesn't work. It's all to the 1 third. Here's what's very interesting about it. This is 2 to the 6th times the third, right there, 
times 5 to the first times a third. 1 times a third is just 1 third. Now if I rewrite that, that comes out to 2 to the 6 thirds, because this is the same thing as 6 over 1, so it's 2 to the 6 over 3 times 5 to the 1 third. 6 over 3 is the same thing as 2, so it's 2 to the 2nd times 5 to the 3rd, power of 1 third, pardon me. 2 to the squared is 4 times 5 third. But if I rewrite this in radical form, it's actually cube root of 5 to the 1st. And we don't put 5 to the 1st. There you go. Same exact answer, different approach. As I said, personally speaking, I think this way is easier for this type of a problem. But we're going to do a problem uh, with a denominator, and we're only going to use variables. Don't want to scare anybody off, but we're going to try it. And we're going to find that this approach is probably the better one in terms of uh, understanding for students. And they like it. But like I said, you have to be equipped. You have to know how to do it in radical form, and you have to know how to do it using powers, uh, or exponents, I should say, and fractional exponents for that matter. With that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.